Hmm. All right, we are. Let's do this. I got really far, and then I realized, wait, let me see if I'm still recording, and I was not. <laughs> so we are. Originally, wants to talk. Secret dispatch. Every breath reports that a letter has been received from a highly ranking inquisitor and it's been handed to the commander confidently and for her eyes only. Since I wasn't, we, we went back and we're, I'm doing it over. For recording purposes. Come back for that room eventually. You have to come back down here. We have to go here for Ninio, which is why we have Ninio. Lair. Yeah, might as well bring both for this. Yeah. But right now, I think we need a break. So, we may do Lance Quest next. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we need to sell teleportation. <clears throat> Sorry, Dresden. Someone on the road. Suffered enough. Huh? Oh, yes, what? <laughs> Let us not hesitate. What did we do? Oh, skip the pleasantries. The world's not ending just I yet. True thing, me alone. Oh. I will prove my worth. Together we Trick. stand. My will is resolute. Open to ideas. Mage. Together we stand. Esmer. 
I need diamond dust. Alright, let's go. Before you exhaust and see on the ground, there's none under the form, and he looks up at you in surprise. Commander, I wasn't expecting to see you here. It appears my luck hasn't ran out just yet. May I ask for your help? You notice a sizable amount of blood pooled by his legs. The blood is tied around one leg below the knee, but it does but that doesn't appear to have stopped the bleeding. Sosia rolls up his sleeve. Talking can wait. We need to help the wounded first. I can take care of him. Let's look at his wound. Fornas lost a lot of blood. Judging by the pool around his boot, he should have collapsed into unconsciousness long ago. He must be a truly resistant fighter. So much blood. He should have lost all strength and collapsed by now. How odd. Is he really that strong? Perception. Orange strength has failed him at the worst possible time. He has stopped to rest in the middle of an open area where a deadly arrow may come in flying from any direction. And anyone approaching him to help will likewise be in danger. Oh. Halt, soldier. An elf seems to have leaped out of thin air. Her commanding shout hitting your ears is a trap. Horn is an assassin of the center of the Winter Council. Dropping his weapon, Fawn shouts out forcefully, Stand, watch out. She's stronger and deadlier than she looks. Slay her before she kills both of us. Why would he want to kill me? He's a cold-blooded assassin sent by the Winter Council. The cabal of scumbags dispatches him whenever he needs an inconvenient truth covered up. And as for anyone unlucky enough to learn such truth, truth that might still be our people's good name, well, he washes it all away with their blood. Fawn mutters, his face scrunched up in contempt. Another lie. Will you ever tire of your deceit, cursed wretch? A trap? What are you talking about? This wound is just for show. He's unharmed and full of strength. His goal is to lure you in so that his cronies can attack you. I bet they're hiding nearby, waiting for the right moment. He looks to survey the seemingly barren landscape suspiciously. Foreign chuckles coldly in ambush. Who is lying to us? Her or your own eyes? Why did you decide to intervene? You spared me. Let's say I'm repairing my debt. He gives you a stony look. Or do you think that since I'm a drow, I don't know the man of honor? I believe Kalesa, for your deception is here. <laughs> oh, so many. So freaking many. Foreign rises to his feet. His movements makes it obvious that his injured leg was nothing more than a ruse. That is a shame. You can't just believe me, this would have been over more quickly and less painful. It's unlikely that my associates will grant you an easy death now. Not hiding his contempt for him lies in the direction of the dark elves that has appeared out of the shadow. What do you really serve? Foreign's voice is full of pride. I serve my people and no one else. Being an elf is not just a privilege, it's, just, it's an obligation that I bear with honor, no matter how heavily it weighs down on me at times. Kalesa's words are cold and biting. Liar. You serve a pack of unscrupulous scumbags, a clique of self-righteous schemers. In order to protect their lives, you murder the innocent, and then you hide behind words like duty. Foreign, have you gone mad? I was tasked with keeping the secrets that Kalesa discovered from getting out. Knowing your reputation, I was certain that you would otherwise have unearthed them in short order. Therefore, I had no choice but to do this. No one is to blame in for this. It's just the way things turned out. I'm not saying... And no, you know what? How can you ally yourself with the drought? Are you a de demon worshiper? His voice trembles with tragedy. I did not seek this perverted alliance, yet it was inevitable. These extreme circumstances forced me to end your life, and Amora has sought your death, so joining forces was mutually beneficial. If things were different, I would be the first to rise up against her, but it just so happens that you have become a greater threat to my nation than she is. Calesta Scowl. Scowling her tone and her and her figure. The Winter Council believes that honor is the most perfect shield against any accusations of ignominious acts. Why did you ask for my help in the hunt for Alyssa? Would I prefer not to have involved you in this matter? And to put her to death myself. Then I wouldn't have had to kill you as well. For a size, I mean, but after my first clash with Alyssa. I realized I didn't have the strength, thus I decided to use you instead. 
And I provided such motivation. I set up these skirmishes with the drow so that my words have seemed more plausible. I regret that I had to stoop to such baseness, but even more I regret that it was unsuccessful. You will pay for your deception, elf. I want to just as you in a calm, somewhat sorrowful manner. I'm, I am sorry for having to do this. Believe me, I take no pe pleasure in carrying out this order. The circumstances are stronger than our desire. We are the light. They are the darkness. How does this work? Ten minutes. The balls are not my subject. Not my subject. It's candle. See the radius though. It's, it's a decent radius. On this, not a surprise round. I will resist. Ooh. And I think yeah, oh no, charge. From Kalissa. <clears throat> Actually, Die. Oh, 
find that. Petrification. I know we still have less, don't we? Yeah. Be gone, fiend! Really? Oh, she's gonna drop. There she go. The inheritor, guide my blade. She needs to let That's not it. That's not really this one. Actually, no. Magic missile. Uh, it's a battery. Oh, 
Mist. Ähm I will bring down the divine wrath! Your peace. There we go. Into the fray. <clears throat> it's a waste on you.
Mjona. Hold back. Beautiful. Yes. Adam. Even in the face of death, Forrest maintains his melancholic tranquility. I knew I would die like this. On the edge of the world, defending the threats of nobility that weave my race into a single glorious nation. Well, at least I do not die in vain. Whose orders are you following? He smiles think that since I'm at death's door, it will reveal the secrets of my superior? You're mistaken. I am others like me know how to make our hearts stop before any treacherous words can spill from our, from our mouths. We we'll remain loyal until the end. Aren't you ashamed of what you did? The mournful look foreign says, you wouldn't understand. You are not of, our, of my people. I would say this, we're not that nice. Just die already, backstabbing the wretch. Warren closes his eyes and a quiet, peaceful breath escapes his lips. His chest stops heaving and the fingers he had wrapped around his, his weapon go limp. Oh. There is a deep bitterness in Kalesma's voice. He even managed to die gracefully, despite being a complete scoundrel. Doing that, can I finally get an explanation of what just happened? Warren wasn't a dark hunter. He was just a hunter. He served the Winter Council, a prophet of an organization. He wants me dead. I learned a very dark secret. That's why they sent Farn to kill me and everyone I could potentially have told about it, meaning you, soldier. The Winter Council, what is it? The Winter Council is a legend of few doubts in its existence. It's said to be a clique of influential elves of Skionin, a mysterious group that watches over the interests of elf and kind, protecting them by enemies necessary. Murder, espionage, blackmail, no tool is excessive for them. If the reputation and honor of the elven nation are at stake, when I decided to tell the world the truth about the dark fate, the bane of our kind, I signed my own death warrant in the eyes of the Winter Council. They don't want elves to be tarnished by their association with the ignoble, the ignoble drow. They're too scared of being held responsible for the crimes of their dark cousins. It's better to hide this dangerous truth and destroy everyone who knows it. What's the dark fate? It's been assumed since time immemorial that the Draw or that draw, so the draw are either a degenerate branch of our kind or they are an abhorrent perversion, a mockery of the dark gods. But the truth is that the schism between the elves and the draw is much smaller than one might think. Any elf can become a draw, absolutely anyone. Whenever an elf commits unthinkable evil, let darkness, letting darkness into their hearts, they may one day transform. The dark fate is a state of a soul, of an unrepentant malefactor, <coughs> malefactor which detests the light. An elf like that is no different from a drow, but both in appearance and in spirit. <coughs> Sorry, and thus they become a drow. Kalesa smiles wordfully. Her face shows the immense fatigue of a must of wandering fighting for survival. Such cruel irony. The elves were trying so desperately to convince everyone that they have nothing to do with a drow, the most vile hearted race in the world. And it turns out that the distance between a normal elf and a drow is but a single step. Tell me about yourself, the whole truth. Where is I? She says in a hollow voice. I was born in Kionin, in the blessed forest of the elves. I was different back then, pure and noble. But no matter how beautiful and fair Kionin was, it has its share of injustice, cruelty, and crimes committed with impunity. And and I never could stand crimes and yet going unpunished. I joined the Sea Wasp, a secret sect of vigilantes dedicated to Calistria. But by night we would bring justice to those whom the law had failed to punish: lies, traitors, molesters, murderers. The further we went, the more our doubts grew. We asked ourselves how reliable was the information we were getting. There 
have been any mistakes. Alas, it was too late. The whole time we were in the province of a priestess of Scari, by the name of Anamora, that monster had been toying with us to not stick out innocence. The boss was revealed to be a locust. And we were unmasked as criminal outcasts. We were wanted and had nowhere to run. The only option was to win Anita Anamora, who promised us protection of us the only one who refused. I was captured and taken by the court. Then, under Anamara's watchful eye, our apprenticeship began. We did dark, horrible things. Faith and violence and spite myself included. I did them too. At first, I was controlled by magic, when they, then they broke me. In the dark fate, the curse of our people took us one by one until, until finally it embraced me as well. I saw the monster I had become, I must have but remained of my will and fled. I wanted to tell everyone the truth, tell them how we were caught in the demon's trap, let the world know about the dark fate. The animals hunters, my former comrade, came for me, and they weren't the only ones that had turned up. Tell me about Animora. She is a true drow, one who was never one who never was a normal elf. And even among the drow, she's a dangerous monster, the deadliest of the scary servants. For her, her flesh nurses, warm the terrifying insects, and her mind. I've never, I've learned the dangers of her guile firsthand. But now, now I ask one last favor. I still have friends left in Keone, real friends, ones I can trust. Send a letter to Anna Even Nara, the leader of the Board of Defense. Recount my tragic tale so it doesn't die as the Winter Council wants it to, since I won't have the chance to speak this truth myself. Because you have to end my life now, soldier. She looks at you calmly, warily. There is neither threat nor fear in her words, only a plea and the acceptance of the inevitable. Why do you seek death? The dark faith is claiming me. I can feel the malevolence and the hatred in my heart growing fiercer with each day that passes. The memories of the crimes I was forced to commit are caught in the world before me. I refuse to thread this part, this path any further. To turn into a monster, if they have any mercy, I beg of you me and in my torment. Maybe with my mythic powers, maybe my mythic powers can return you to the path of light. The curse can't be, can't be in reverse. Deep-seated fear appears on Colossus' face no more. I've already been changed once, and I won't let anyone do it to me again. And if you want to save me now, know that I will sooner slit my own throat and allow my soul to be reshaped once more. You can't give up. Don't listen to her in care. Even with the wounded beg, even with the wounded beg for death, the healer can keep fighting for every life. I've endured enough fighting cleric. Thank you for your heartfelt words, but this case is incurable. Pray for me. Let me go to cover as my peace. What if you can see what if you can still be safe? There's a dark fate there. Could there be a light fate? Maybe good deeds can heal you. With a brittle smile, Calessa shakes her head. A light fate? Wouldn't that be nice, but No. No. No such blessing exists. The world in darkness goes only one way, and I've reached its end. The dark impulses in my heart have been growing stronger by the day. It's been getting harder and harder to remain myself to resist the urges of in all my strength. When I saw foreign dying, I almost howled in delight. I wanted to dig my nails into his face, watch out his eyes, mangle him, and rejoice. It's not me anymore. It's the beast I've been turned into, and it will break me free. Very soon. They're the last. These are the last minutes of the old Calesso's life. Please don't delay in framing the fate of becoming a monster. Isn't the curse that's damning you? Is the curse that's damning you truly stronger than your passionate heart? Stronger than a pure soul? Even as a child, you will retain your memory, your personality. You can still do some good and struggle against the call of evil as before. Calesso covers her eyes wearily. I understand why you want to believe that so badly. You're afraid that you might be damned too. I don't know. Maybe you can ascend from the darkness. The path is close to me now. I'm exhausted. I can't fight. I can't fight any longer. I'm sorry. Goodbye, soldier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this looks horrible. We look like we gave her a bunch of pain. We 
march ahead. Missed me already. Okay. strong. 